this computer. Okay. And we're live. Okay. Um, this is Yule, the Yule Moot, and I am with instructor Umbra. Um, Umbra, you want to say your whole name for everyone, just for the record? <laughs> That's Umbra Del, Del Ugano. Del Ugano. Of the hurricane. Shadow oh, okay. of the hurricane. <laughs> Shadow of the hurricane. Excellent. Okay. Um, this move, we are talking about contemplation. We're talking about reflection. And with in bulk coming around the corner, we're also thinking about our new goals, uh, new goals and new uh, paths for us this, this next year. Um, one of those paths has always been, always kind of, I call it the elephant in the room, having an apprentice becoming an instructor. And you have been one of the recent inductees into the um, faculty. And you've also been, um, you've been a prefect, you've been an apprentice for quite some time. Yep. And um, you and I have collaborated as prefects. And I kind of just thought it would be a great idea for you to share your journey. What steps did it take for you to be where you are today? Um, well, way back when I, I first discovered the Grace School, I, I think that it was always a goal from the beginning, just to be able to, to rise to that level of, of knowledge and understanding of, of magic. That was sort of the, the ultimate goal when the student knows enough to become the teacher. So I've been in and out of the school uh, at various points, just because, uh, you know, with stuff going on with my kids, one of my oldest is autistic, and sometimes we'd go through periods of heavy therapy with that, and I didn't have time for studies. So I would have to take a break and then come back. Um, one, of, uh, one of my mentors, early mentors, uh, was uh, Dean Artemis. I don't, know, I don't know how long you've been with the school, mm -hmm. remember her. She, um, she was first person that I met in person uh, through the grade school, and that was back in 2010. And we, um, we built up a, a close friendship. I've been to her house a number of times, and her untimely passing was a, a shock to all of us. But she was, um, she was my mentor for my, um, for my retreat. And I, you know, I've always felt really bad that uh, she never got to see me become faculty because I know she would have been thrilled. But it, it's just always been a goal from the beginning. And when I finally got to this point, uh, it was really through uh, kind of the inspiration of uh, Dean Shadowfox. I learned so much through him like over the past uh, couple years that he really just, um, you know, took my, my magic from being just something that I was learning about to being an active part of my everyday life. So it was, it went from being theory to being practice. It went to a point where I was no longer like thumbing through the books going, you know, how do I do this ritual? Um, you know, and having to keep going back. It's like, I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. It was at, at that point, I, I talked to him about it and he said, you know, you're ready. So he's like, go for it. And coming from him, uh, when, if he says go for it, I feel like I'm ready. Okay. The biggest compliment I could get was to hear that from him. Nice, nice. All right, so good. So you've always you've had some people in the in the background helping you along the way. So very nice, very nice. Um, and what is your research topic? What, what is your topic that you're interested in? Well, um, my background, and this, this again comes from Dean Shadowfox. You know, I was kind of interested in a little bit of of everything, but. I think we all want to have some specific focus, some specialty. And it was through him that I, you know, I got interested in folk magic. I got into, you know, interested in hoodoo and, you know, studying, I guess, what, what the school refers to as sorcery or, or low magic, which is, I think, a really misunderstood discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it gets kind of maligned. 
And that, that's unfortunate. And I think that comes out of the fact that, you know, many of these traditions come out of people, out of cultures where people are really marginalized mm -hmm. and have um, access to, to justice. And so some of the, you know, the types of workings they have are a little bit harsh. And mm -hmm. we don't, you don't want to encourage apprentices to like pick up some of those, those grimoires and go, oh, this says it's okay to hex somebody and I go out and do that. Right. It's more, more about cultural context and understanding the, the people that these arise out of. And once you, once you do that, then you understand what's ethical, what isn't, and then understand those people and, you know, the, the circumstances that this arose out of, and you have an appreciation for that. And that's why I chose to be associated with the law department, mm -hmm. because it's, it's really about understanding that background. You can't really... The focus uh, on archetypes? The what? The focus on archetypes. I'm the focus on archetypes. The on archetypes the, more, more like um, just the understanding the cultural backgrounds that these traditions come up. You know, because if you just uh, you know just uh, teach that in the dark arts and you don't have a, a context, you know, our our hoodoo classes. There's two classes. There's three classes total, but the first two um, are more to give you the context. Uh -huh. but, Take any one of the, these folk arts and you, you know, you teach the methods and you don't teach the context, then you're, you're really doing a, a disservice both to that culture and, you know, you're also running into some of those ethical issues if you're trying to practice something, you know, people who didn't have access to justice and were like, you know, running for lives, you know, like, you know, with, a, you know, slaves like uh, Harriet Tubman. Right. And what... Uh, counts as um, what would have counted as ethical for them um, is, is totally understandable in that context. And for us to do it, it's it's um, it's disrespectful and it's um, it's it, you know it's a uh, you know a, a danger of us doing something unethical. And so we have this kind of maligned uh, attitude of you know towards sorcery when it, it shouldn't have to be that way. If you understand the culture and what the people have gone through then you have a real appreciation for it. And it's, it's not something that you need to be afraid of. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, but that's, yeah, so when you talk about my, my research, it's yeah. more learning about those cultures. And I really want to bring a lot of that to the law department. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're focusing on the cultural context behind uh, folk magic. Yes. Excellent. And right now we have, um, I have two proposals that have been approved for two classes on a death tradition and culture around the world. So that is like my December project, working on those classes. Nice. nice. Hopefully, uh, hopefully by January, we'll have a couple new classes. Fingers crossed. Nice. Um, so specific to your journey to becoming an instructor. Now, we do know that on the website, um, the, uh, the, the handbook, uh, we have specific prerequisites that are required to becoming an instructor. And during those prerequisites, was there something that you felt that required specific focus? Was there something that you felt kind of blindsided by? Something that you would say, you know, hey, watch out, watch out for this because you could get sidetracked? I, I don't think so. I mean, all the, the prerequisites are just everything you really need to do just to get to level four anyway. Mm -hmm. right. um, I know when you re request the, the application, it's, I mean, it's, it's only a few pages long, but there's so many questions on it and they're so in depth that when I returned my, um, my answers, it was like a, a 16 page PDF. So it was the exhaustive uh, process, you know, you really have to be prepared to, to know, like, <laughs> be able to demonstrate uh, everything you know about magic. I mean, you, they, you, have to go ha you have to go through each one of the departments and rate yourself about so like a dissertation defense. A little bit, but you, but you know, it's that whole self rating system. It's like, I, I think it's like between like one and three, how, how well do you know this department and explain. <laughs> so it's like, you, you better know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and the interview, uh, what was your interview like? 
Uh, that was actually uh, fairly fairly easy. Um, you know, our dean of faculty is uh, very easy to talk to. Um, you know, whatever uh, whatever nervousness I had going into that was you know very easily very quickly dispelled. So that was a, a very uh, a pleasant experience. Uh, you know, relative you know relative to having to answer all those questions and you right. know. Wait for 16 pages and going, oh my gosh, I hope I'm pleading my case. But the, the interview itself was pretty painless. The Dean Ambika Devi is quite, uh, she's quite adept at that. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. Um, and I understand that uh, once you got accepted, uh, you had a certain time of probation. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, something. What, what was that about? What, is there a um, specific time length? And during that time length, what, what goes on? Well, you have to take a pretty intensive class for faculty training. There's a, a few assignments, and some of them are quite large. Like uh, the first assignment is to write about your your vision for you know what you want to bring to grade school, and that was like multiple thousands of words. I mean, I think of like some of the essays that I've had to turn in over the years. That's like this kind of exceeded anything I've had before just in the first assignment and I think the second assignment has to um, do with ethics really and you did that after the interview you did the class yes uh, yeah you take the class after after you sign the contract you don't even okay. uh, you so don't even during your probation you're taking the class yeah well you don't start teaching right away I forget what lesson it is like lesson 10 or something um, where you get to the I'd have to go check sure you get to the point where you can request a, a class takeover and that's sort of when the probationary period begins so i forget, it tells you in the handbook how long that that is mm -hmm. but uh yeah i guess i'm you know i'm no longer considered a faculty initiate i am an instructor that is my title so yep. um, right now the, the next challenge is i you know i'm taking the uh, nuts and bolts uh, class writing class mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, hopefully, like I said, in de by the end of December, um, I'll have two classes completed. Very good. Very nice. Um, and uh, wh what was your personal retreat like? Uh, what did you do? And uh, how has that helped prepare you to become an instructor? Um, well, that was a number of years ago. So I had to go... <laughs> It was a Halloween retreat. I think it was like three days um, leading up to Halloween. And I mentioned my, my mentor was, uh, was mm -hmm. Dean Agnes. Um, I actually dug out some of the, the books that I used. I have the, the Pagan Book of Halloween. I did a, a ritual out of this book. I did a number of tarot readings. Um, but this, this was one of the big things. This is the, the American Book of the Dead. It's an um, Americanized uh, reading of the Tibetan Book of the Dead, which is meant to be read aloud to um, guide any spirits, you know, into the afterlife. So, so you read it on Halloween. I remember being hoarse after, because you read the entire thing aloud. Oh, so, oh. Of the retreat was reading this whole book aloud. I was, I was really hoarse. The other thing I did, and I, I got this out, is I worked on my personal grimoire. So you see how big this thing is. This was yeah. what I did over my retreat. <laughs> um, this is like what it looks like. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's intense. Um, yeah, intense. But it, it's got all these um, different uh, sections, herbology, crystals, the holidays, uh, mythical creatures, uh, but everything. And it, it was just um, recording all the, what knowledge I had obtained, uh, I, you know, I had to look through a lot of the, the coursework that I'd already done, research I'd already done, uh -huh. to put that together so I would have, uh, you know, this, this reference of, of things that I had accomplished, mm -hmm. uh, that I've written, uh -huh. uh, that I've worked with. So that was my, my big project, was doing that. Okay, excellent. And obviously that helped get you organized and stuff, so that definitely took that into your, into your instructorship. Um, so excellent. excellent. Is there anything that you would say if an apprentice came to you tomorrow and said, Hey, I'm really interested in being an instructor. Is there one piece of information that you think they really, 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 really need to move forward? 
I don't know so much about information as much as skill. You need to have good writing skills. Okay. Know at, at least uh, at least one have at least one area of expertise, and it, it definitely helps if it's something that the Gray School is looking, uh, you know, a position they're looking to fill. Like right now, they're looking for someone for for a beast mastery, also somebody for lifeways. But you know, I I think they'll uh, look. At, um, excuse me. Any uh, any application, um, you, certainly they'll take a look at it. But I know writing skills is a is a big one. Okay. Okay. Well, we definitely are scholars, are we not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to be. They want yeah, you to be. Absolutely. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for taking taking this time and for allowing uh, allowing everyone to. Uh, glean some of your knowledge, some of your experience. Um, it's it's amazing to to see. I mean, I've I've only been here a year and a half, and you've gone so far. And I'm really really happy for you, and I I wish you the best. Oh, thank you. And I hope I can uh, see you live at the the actual moot. 